Okay, so today we're going to be focusing on Genesis 7. Sekiri is holding the camera right behind. Uh, so it's really hard to focus because I'm looking at her. <laughs> She's licking her lips at me and I'm trying oh, to think of the it. Bible right now. And I'm like, oh, Genesis 7. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I'm Alex. Then we have Sekiri over there who's going to talk. Right after this, uh, right after me, um, but just take a listen to Genesis 7 and then we'll uh, dive deep into what it means and how it relates to the kingdom of heaven. Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me. In, in this, this generation. generation. You, you shall take, take with, with you seven each of every clean animal, a male and his female, two each of animals that are unclean, a male and his female, also seven each of birds of the air, male and female, to keep the species alive on the face of all the earth. For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth, Forty days and forty nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood waters were on the earth. So Noah, with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives, went into the ark because of the waters of the flood, of clean animals, of animals that are unclean, of birds, and of everything that creeps on the earth. Two by two, they went into the ark to Noah, male and female, as God had commanded them. After seven days, that the waters of the flood were on the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. And the rain was on the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah and Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them, entered the ark. They and every beast after its kind, all cattle after their kind, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth after its kind, and every bird after its kind, every bird of every sort. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, of all flesh in which is the breath of life. So those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. Now the flood was on the earth forty days. The waters increased and lifted up the ark and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark moved about on the surface of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly on the earth, and all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed 15 cubits upward, and the mountains were covered, and all flesh died that moved on the earth birds and cattle and beasts and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every man all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life all that was on the dry land died so he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground 
both man and cat, creeping thing and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. And the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. So, as we reflect on Genesis 7, this is where the flood came on the earth and Noah went into the ark. And I like the part that says that the animals went to him two by two. And in terms of how I see that, it reassures me that any blessings that God has for me will come to me. And that's what came up when I heard that, you know, Noah didn't go and look for the animals. They actually walked into the heart, the, the ark to him. And so I want to encourage myself and encourage you to just know that God, God's blessings will come to you and they are with you just as though they are with me. So let's give thanks. Alex. Yeah. So... For me, I, I like to relate Noah's story personally, and so I related, related it, or I relate it to a time when I, not I, but when God wanted me to transition from my old life into my new life. And so when Noah had, when he took two of clean and unclean that's kind of like my virtues like I was taking my virtues with me clean and unclean but like some of these virtues I would have to learn along the way that they were clean or unclean but it was for me for the Lord to decide if it was meant for me to take with me and I find that Noah's Ark is and having the great flood is really just about washing away my old life, getting rid of it, and stepping into the new life that I wanted. And so, yes, it was very scary and I was fearful of it, but deep inside, God was sharing with me that it was time for me to build this Ark. I had to build um, the Ark within me. And God built the ark, helped me to build the ark within me so that I could weather the storm of starting a brand new life and weather the, the floods and weather, um, yeah, weather the floods. So it was important for me to, to do that. And so I'm just thankful and grateful today to look back on that and see that same story and how it relates to me. I'm hearing a message of cleansing coming from yeah, cleansing. you. Yeah, cleansing. And um, that's so cool because... So, you always sum it up so nicely. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's cool, you know, even on the physical level, knowing then to go through um, periods of cleansing, in cleansing intentionally. Some of it happens unintentionally if you have a diarrhea, but it's good if you plan for <laughs> like a juice cleanse. I wish you could see my face right now. <laughs> they can see it. <laughs> It was we cleanse our lives of the things that are not serving our higher good, that's not serving God's purpose for our souls, and step into the ark with faith, knowing that God got our back and He is always taking care of us. And so we will repeat affirmations of discovered souls. God is good. God is good. That's not what it is. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm like, yeah. Sakuri is distracted by the cars <laughs> driving on the road. She's like, squirrel. <laughs> Here we are. It's beautiful. All right. God is love. God is love. <laughs> love is eternal. Love is eternal. I am that I am. I am that I am. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being you. We are one. We are one. All is perfect whole and complete all is perfect whole and complete 
Complete with unconditional love. Complete with unconditional love. <laughs> Endless joy. Endless joy. Abundant wealth. Abundant wealth. Perfect health. Perfect health. And infinite peace. And infinite peace. Life is good. Life is good. And, and it, it keeps, keeps getting, getting better, 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 and, and better. better. It, it is so wonderful. <laughs> Sakiri so always used to do that before. I would always hear when we were back in Toronto in our my little our little four hundred and seventy five square foot condo, and then I'd hear her recording these videos, and I'd be like on the couch, and then she'd be like doing the affirmations. You know, wonderful, amazing. Did not look like that. Were you recording me? <laughs> yes, it oh, was on you. <laughs> It was on your alarm. I'll do my affirmations. I <laughs> promise that they bring me closer to the God. Anyways, <laughs> thank you so very much for listening. And please feel free to share the kingdom principles that you got from listening to Genesis chapter 7. seven. seven. Okay. It's been such an amazing experience. So we're just at Genesis 7, but I feel like listening to the Bible each day or at least three days of the week that we do and discussing it and what we're learning is building up our faith and yes. just our understanding of ourselves so much more. I am so happy and grateful because as you said, Alex, it's a, it's a blueprint of our lives and it makes so much sense of what is happening in the world, but more so in our own lives so and i think i think it's really important to that what you said the blueprint because i had to make that distinction yesterday because at first i said it was an instruction manual and then i realized it was it's actually a blueprint and what i mean by that is um because a, a lot of the times the bible can be taken literally and we can take it word for word and that would be the instruction manual but depending on the time we're in those instructions can mean different things. And so it's not important to look at it from the literal point of view, but to look at it as a blueprint, as a guideline to helping us understand ourselves and to not use it as in we have to follow these in order to get closer to God. God's already within us. Yes. God is already us. So it, the Bible is not going to bring us closer to God because God's already in us. But it will help us to understand that God is already in us and we can build and grow our faith by reading the Bible and understanding that that blueprint is actually about ourselves and about our connection with God and the relationship we have. I just know that even sometimes for me, like sometimes I get lost in the words and I get lost in the literal meanings of things and it can be kind of like when I get lost in those literal meanings it can get very weary and i can feel confused with the bible because then i'm like why does it say this and then the next the next book it says that and i'm like okay what well it says that's this over here but over there it says something completely different and if i look at the literal meaning in the bible like i can get swayed and i can get pulled here and there and I think it's important to not look at the literal meaning of the Bible, but to look at it as a blueprint, like I said, and to really use it as a template to help us understand ourselves, understand our connection with God, and understand our relationship with God, because God is in us. And I find for me, the more I read the Bible, the deeper the connection gets that I have with God, and it allows me to profess my faith and allows me to talk about my faith out loud, because at the end, God wants that. And the Bible is one of God's tools to help us to be able to proclaim our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ or the Lord God. Whoever you want to worship, it doesn't make a difference. Um, but the Lord God, the Lord Jesus Christ is one in the same. They are one in the same thing. And I think it's just um, the Bible is actually when I read it and uh, the more I read it, the 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 easier it is to read because i'm starting to let go of the attachment to what it says and starting to look at just how i feel while i read it and what stands out to me and i think it's important to share that because i know a lot of times 
um, whether it's religion or churches or or any anything any belief system um, sometimes it can be taken literally and that's perfect whole and complete the way it is and that's exactly for them but I'm here to let you know that if you're sitting there wondering oh, I don't want to read the Bible because I you know religion and belief system or whatever I grew up Catholic and I understand what that's like um, to have fear and to not know God and to not really know who he is. And I'm just here to let you know that it's okay to accept God into your life. Um, he will embrace you as soon as you accept him. He, You'll see that his outstretched arm has always been there. He's always been asking for your hand, for our hand. And... And again, the Bible is just a way for us to put out our hand. And just choosing to read the Bible means that we're choosing to get closer to God in whatever way that is. And there is no specific way, but always lead to God. Amen. Amen. That being said, amen.